Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Hope you enjoyed the intro as usual. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. I have a super awesome special guest that I cannot wait to talk to. This has been like a couple months in the, the making. I've been waiting for a while to speak with her. She's so, so awesome. She got lots to talk about. I uh, really don't think we would be able to even touch on a little bit of her career, but we're going to definitely give it a shot as best we can. And, you know, this is just going to be a wild show. I hope you all are ready. And, you know, we're going to keep it real. We're going to talk about the good stuff, the bad stuff, nothing too personal as usual. But I would like to show you her comedy demo reel before we jump into it. Tonight's guest is Julie Dolan. So everybody enjoy this lovely, lovely reel. What is the least fabulous thing about being a rock star? Waiting. Good morning. I told him that you're trying to pretend that you don't remember the night. I don't remember the night. I remember the night. The whole reunion remembered the night. Terrific. Hey, everybody had a crush on Butch Danes in high school. Oh, so serious, so intense. So hot in those tiny little shorts. Yes. Okay, I should go find Rose. Oh, well, there's always room for a foursome. <laughs> so, 20 years later, none of you are married? Oh, no, we're all married. Oh, there's Liz. So, I'm a little confused. Who did you say got married? Oh, I put eight ounces of Viagra in the guacamole. <gasps> Always gets a party going. <laughs> <laughs> French toast? Mom, I'm on a no-bread diet. Since when? Since now! Oh, I hate you! I hope you die! Oh, are you kidding? No, I went straight home from the salvage sale. I cut the tags off, washed them, dried them, and wore them. Several times. They, uh, they make my butt look smaller. <laughs> I know you're building this fancy house for John Adams, but damn it, I was the first president, and I'm going to be the first president to screw an intern in the White House. Yes, sir. Great. Now get in bed, Dolores. At your service. There's Tammy, a Holiday Inn Express prostitute who rakes in $38.99 a night, plus free shower gel and conditioner. Have dinner with your wife, invite a hooker to join you, boom, side dish. Hey, can I get a private room for me and my friend? No, that's okay. Let's go find a tool shed. Prostitute turning tricks. <laughs> Thank you so very much for joining me tonight, Julie. That is just, uh, I'm cracking up the whole time I'm watching that reel. <laughs> yes, so, so am I. I forgot how many hooker roles I played uh, on Conan. And I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh. I hope, I hope they don't say any, you know, anything off color. Yeah. <laughs> well, luckily, I, I went ahead and took a look at that before we put it oh, on good. there. But good. <laughs> You know, uh, talk about typecasting. <laughs> I'm just I'm kidding. Yeah, well, I, I made a career of playing hookers. Uh, but now that I'm getting a little older, I'm starting to play. Um, hang on, I'm turning it, your, your volume up. I'm starting to play like the person who represents uh, the hooker. In, you know, I just played a, a custody officer in a prison um, uh, last week on a series. And so I'm starting to audition for the social workers and the, um, the nurses and the doctors and the people that, uh, and lawyers that take care of the hookers. So I'm starting to <laughs> flip over to the other side. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. So I got to tell you, I am a huge fan of Gilmore Girls and oh. that particular scene um, you know, any scene where Luke is uncomfortable is particularly funny to me. <laughs> and, and that yeah. scene really, that's a good one. I, oh, I enjoyed good. that. And your I, character really sets that off. Um, I was on five episodes, but it spread out through maybe four seasons. And I played Luke's sister, um, Liz. I played one of her best friends. So whenever she was in an episode, they would have some of her friends in. And then I would just do, um, I played the same character the whole time, Anna, and I would just have one line in this episode, two lines in that episode, and then this, you know, couple of episodes, there'd be big full scenes. So they just kind of kept me working, which was really nice. 
Absolutely. I mean, yeah. in, in a career like acting, that's always good to know they're they're calling you back. Yes. Yes. So what what was it that got you interested in acting in the first place? Was this something that happened back when you were a a, a wee baby, or? <laughs> Actually, it was. Yeah, uh, I was three years old, four years old, and I remember seeing Shirley Temple on oh. television. And I was watching her in a movie and I said to my mom, that's what I want to do. So I, she put me in dance class. So I was in tap, jazz, ballet, acrobatics at four years old, started performing. You know, they had little recitals and things like that. So it, it, which got me exposed to being on stage. So I did that until I was nine the, the dance school had uh, an acting division. So I started taking acting classes. At nine years old, I got an agent and I started going oh. on auditions. Um, You, you have a growth spurt or you are a different age. You know what I mean? You play different ages. Um, so it, 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 you go, th I've been through starting as a kid playing young teenagers. Then your twenties, you're still playing teenagers. And then I didn't work for a while. It was like, okay, I'm too young to play the mom, but I'm too old to play the kid. Mm. So you had to, uh, I kind of had to wait, you know, and, and, I was still dancing. So I was made a living as a dancer in theme parks, on stage, TV, film, but I, I was in costume. I worked in a theme park for 11 years, Universal Studios, and I was dancing on stage in a mouse costume or in a pig costume or in a giraffe costume, you know. So I made a living as an animal for years. And uh, in fact, I just did a commercial a couple of years ago, one of those uh, Kia soul it's a car commercial yeah and they have they have the hamsters so they had a whole music video and i was i play piano or guitar it's like a little guitar but it's a piano and i was a, a hamster um playing the guitar <laughs> i can't get away from these animals i just you know it's <laughs> like and i was in a movie called basketball with with the the uh, trey Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the South Park right. guys, and I was their mascot because it was it was on uh, a, a basketball field, and I was a beer barrel, huge big beer barrel. You can't see my face, but because I'm so comfortable in costume and I'm able to actually act through all that stuff, you can you know there's there's a certain technique of of acting through fur or acting through something, you know, you, it takes a while to learn it, but once you do, God, it, you can just make these, these inanimate objects come alive. These costumes come alive. So I worked on that movie the whole time in a beer barrel costume. And I made a lot of money on that show. It was crazy. <laughs> right. I, I was going to ask if, uh, you know, doing all of that back when you were younger in all those theme parks, if that was the part of your resume that got you that, that job. <laughs> um, yes, because uh, the, uh, the person that actually they hired got claustrophobic. And oh. the casting director knew that I had done that work. So they said they need somebody down there right now who can put this on and not freak out. So I was, I went down there and I, you know, that's what I did every day. Hold on. My light just went out. Let me, <laughs> let me fix my light. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I can still talk though. Cause I'm right here. Um, so anyway, so yeah, that each job, lent itself to the next job. Um, and then I was in uh, Beverly Hills Cop 3, I think, with Eddie Murphy. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, the movie takes place in a theme park. So John Landis, who directed it, came to Universal and said, well, I want all these costume characters, um, of course. So he hired all the costume characters that were walk-arounds. And I thought, you know, he doesn't know what we can do in these costumes. So I grabbed another dancer and I put together a little, like a routine, like a tap dancing routine. And I put on my costume for that day. And we went up to Universal Towers and 
we had a meeting with John Landis and I said, I wanna show you what's possible in these costumes. So we did a dance routine. All of a sudden he created a brand new scene on stage with Eddie Murphy and he hired a bunch of dancers from our show. So oh, we wow. all so we all got to be, rather than just walk around and be just walk around characters, we were actually performing in a show. And I'm still getting residuals for that movie. Oh my God, I mean, oh, they're little, wow. they're very little, but you still, it was, you know, we were main characters in that, sh in that movie. Wow. But you couldn't, you couldn't see our face. You know, I was a pig on stage with Katie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are very few sentences in the world that go like that so <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's crazy and you you have no end to this you're still plugging along you're still planning on doing this and until the end of time or um the the costume character stuff i you know i hung up my costume years ago but when this kia commercial came along I couldn't turn that down. That was, it was a national commercial and it was so much put on. You have, I mean, a furry mat, a head on. You just have a helmet where everything's open because it's all CGI. They go right. in and they will do computerized and make your face. So we, it wasn't like we were in a hot costume with a big, you know, head on. Um, it, we were outdoors. The, it was, it was a great, sh we, I think we shot for like a week and then we got to go to Capitol records and actually record the song. Cause it was a, it's a, a music video, sort of a music video. It's a commercial, but there's a, um, a guy that like a folk singer, uh, Nathan, Nathan Rat, Rat, Radif, Radcliffe. I don't remember what that, some singer songwriter guy that was, that was starring in the, in the uh, commercial, but we mm -hmm. got to go to Capitol records and actually record the song. Oh. that we performed so it was a really great experience right and you know that's actually kind of a really good segue you were doing all of these roles and showing how you can still be a very good actor even while just completely disguised yeah you know so kind of moving into the next topic that i wanted to talk about is your voice acting career where you're not even you at that point how is acting different in that aspect or would you consider it the same? Well, when I first started doing voiceovers, um, I, my sister, actually it was because I was doing all of these costume character roles and little movies and, and, and children's shows, I kept getting asked, hey, can you just do a little voice here and there? And so I was like, uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, so I would do li little voices of little characters. And my sister said, you're getting a lot of voiceover work. Why don't you pursue that? Oh, no, 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 I don't wanna do that. That's a whole other career. I, I gotta get you know, a demo, I gotta get an agent, and uh, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. I got dancing, I've got music, I've got acting. I'm, my plate is full. She <laughs> said, but you keep, you might as well put a little effort in. So I said, okay, I'll take a voiceover class. It's an acting class. Basically, it, it's the same. As an actor, you come from the same place when you're discovering your character. Your, who, what do you want, who you are, where you just came from, what your goals are in life. All of that stuff plays into voice acting as well. You're just behind a microphone and no camera. So it's the same, acting is the same from the inside. But you know, you make the same choices, you break down the script, all that stuff. Um, it's just you have to act through the microphone, and you got to be careful mm. not to like overact, you know, and try oh. to be uh, cartoony or anything. You have to be real. They really want you to be real, especially for commercials. They're like, no salesman, no pit sales pitchy, no announcery. We want natural, like you're talking to your best friend. Oh. So. And so I took this voiceover class and at the end of the four weeks, they, you can do a demo. So oh. I did the four weeks and I love this guy. He's, he's become a friend of mine, the teacher. And then all of a sudden my music career kind of took off. So I, <laughs> I play keyboards at that time. I was in five bands cover oh. and tributes and we were working 
constantly. And I had to like drop everything and learn a bunch of music, cover songs, all cover songs. And there goes my light again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Um, so I put it on hold for the voiceover stuff. About a year later, I said, okay, I'm ready. Uh, I better take the class again. So I took the class and we did my demo. I sent it out to two agents. I signed with one of them. And then I booked a national commercial like a week later. And I was like, wow, my sister was right. I should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that's so, cool. And then one thing led to another. And my agent called me one day and said, hey, can you sound like Princess Leia? And I said, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, never, never thought about it. Um, so they sent me the uh, Obi Wan Kenobi speech and said, record this and try to match her voice. So I recorded it and I listened to the rhythm. I listened to her pitch. I listened to the emotion. I listened to everything, and I tried to. I, I talked right along with it. That's how I do it. I talk along with it, and then I take her away, and I and I try to match it. And then I sent it in, and I didn't know what it was for. I never tell you what, especially Star Wars. It just don't tell you what anything is for, understandably. So mm -hmm. I um ended up booking the job and I still didn't know what it was. And it ended up being at Disneyland. When you go on the star tours ride, um, they have different holograms that come out like Darth Vader or Yoda um, or uh, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi will come out or Princess Leia. And they talk to the people in the ride and that's oh. what it was for. So my first Leia job was at Disneyland and at Disney world. And uh, then after that, I got rebels and then started doing a bunch of video games and then Legos. And, uh, and then I started doing conventions. I'd never even been to a convention. I didn't even know what cosplay was. <laughs> and now I'm doing conventions all over the world and meeting all these fans and, Oh my God, it opened up a whole new world. Yeah. How's it, what's that feel like having a fan come up dressed as your character wanting a picture and an <laughs> autograph? And I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love, uh, I love meeting all the fans. I love, uh, going, well, you can't go to conventions now, but they, yeah. they just, it, it's all of a sudden you have all of this, a new family and they're just so happy to meet you and they're so ex you know you it, they just tell you how much you meant to them and and how to bring you know a lot of people love rebels they love rebels so i did one episode of rebels and it, it just ch it changed everything for me um and you know when i meet people that's what they remember they they had no idea that i I'm at Disneyland or at Disney World. Or I've done all this other uh, video games for Star Wars, but Rebels is the main, you know. Right. Main. I'm going to turn on a light. Hang on one second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the dark. And, I don't know if this will help. You have. You've done so much. I mean, all different types, too. You've got the voice work of um, Sophia the First. Rebels, oh yeah. yeah video games you know you've got the costumed stuff from basketball like you were saying oh my god uh, you were in detention you were, <laughs> i yeah. mean you're just all over the place do you have a genre that you would prefer to do over the others or are you just i don't i'll do it all i don't care um i you know as an actor you kind of take what y you get can get but uh, I would say um, TV, uh, like episodic TV, to have a reoccurring role or a series regular on uh, episodic TV would be great, like down the street at Warner Brothers. So then I just drive to Warner Brothers every day and go to work. <laughs> you know, I did that. I did that once. I was on a series for uh, 68 episodes of, of a series and you drive to Burbank, you know your schedule, you know your cast. Every episode is different. You're always learning. You're always challenging yourself. It was just great. But I also like doing feature films. 
because mm -hmm. you dive into the character. You go on location sometimes, you dive into the character, and you just live that character the whole time you're on location. Oh, that would just be such a fun ride. Like, just to yeah. be on set and interacting with everybody. And uh, do you find it hard to go from being in character one second to being yourself and then going back into character? Or do you just stay on character the whole time. I'm not one of those actors that um, will say you you can only talk to me as my character or only call me by that name. Um, but I do, like a lot of actors, require concentration because I have to go in and out of it. So sometimes I need quiet. I need to focus and you know, a lot of people can say, oh, she, she's kind of stuck up. She's, the, they say that about actors a lot, but actors are, they're in their head trying to remember their lines. I remember um, getting my makeup done and I was like, oh my God, what is, I got to go over my lines. And she was talking to me and I'm like, I just need, I need quiet. I'm so sorry. I'm about to shoot this big scene. And I'm like, I don't remember my lines. And, you know, so you just, there's a lot going on in here as, with, as an actor. Uh, you got to remember your blocking. You got to remember your lines. You've got to remember who you are. You've got to remember where you are in the movie because you don't shoot everything in in sequence. So mm -hmm. this series I did last week, um, I kept saying to the director, "What? Where did we just come from? Because what just happened? Oh, we just did this scene. Oh, okay, great. Now I know where we are. The director knows the big picture. Right. As an actor, sometimes you don't get that luxury of knowing." the whole picture because you're doing pieces of it. So you've got to kind of put together, where am I at emotionally? Oh, where's the arc of this? Oh, oh, okay. I, I can't get too emotional here because I've got that next scene that's coming up that that's, that's my climax of my emotional scene. So I've got to put a lid on it, on this scene. You know what I mean? There's a lot you have to wrestle with. Right. And that's, you have your director that kind of guides you and you got to trust them that they can see the full picture and guide you in the right direction there you, know? you have it there you have it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so as we're kind of winding down towards the end here uh, i i would like to kind of do a um what we like to call shameless self-promotion uh, if you have any websites or uh, social medias that you want people to follow you on you sure. can go ahead and announce it now um, I would say Twitter is just call me Leia. And my Instagram is Julie M as in Marie, Julie M Dolan. And Facebook is Julie Dolan actress. And I read everything. And then my websites, are, my voiceover websites, Julie Dolan VO.com. And a lot of people will request um, autographed photos and things like that. Um, so I, I answer all of them. I see them, they come right into my email. And a lot of, it's so funny, a lot of people are like, is this really you? Because I'm like chatting with them, hey, how's it going? Oh, you want an autograph picture? Okay, here, you know, this is what you do, go to PayPal. And they're like, wait yep. a minute, is this is this you? Yeah, it's me, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, right, I'm just a normal person, I'm right here. <laughs> you know, I'm, I live in LA and, you know, I'm in five rock bands and I do acting and voiceovers. Jeez. You know, so. <laughs> You guys, uh, how do you have the time? <laughs> I don't, well, when I was in, when I was in five, I didn't sleep much. Oh, and okay. So uh, you know, my husband said to me, if you join one more band, I'm leaving you. So I'm, <laughs> I, this year during COVID, I, there was no gigs. So yeah. none of the bands were working. So I focused on my acting career and it just flourished. I did a lot of voiceover work from home because you have to upgrade your studio. We all these voice actors as soon as covid hit, we had to upgrade everything if we wanted to continue to audition and to work. So I upgraded my studio and I started booking jobs from home. And now that the bands are there's some gigs that are happening, I've sort of retired from a few bands and I've kept two. An all female um Aerosmith band. Oh cool. <laughs> called Ragdolls. Oh, um, all right. Ragdollsband.com. And then an In Excess. Do you remember In Excess from, yeah. from uh, so I'm in an in, in Excess tribute band. We've been together 15 years now and we play all over the world and 
and conventions and concerts in the park and things like that. So that's starting to happen again. Oh, that's awesome. And, yeah. you know, I'm going to put links to all of your stuff in the description of the podcast and on the video on YouTube. So hopefully okay. people can just click and go. Um, with these last few moments, though, I would like to ask you if you would like to take part in one of the new features. It's kind of like a, a mini game where uh, I will spin a wheel <laughs> and the wheel will determine a question. Okay. And if you're feeling up to it, it's very whimsical. It's it's just kind of craziness. Yeah. All right. So let me get this out here. I'm going to spin it up in the camera so everybody can see. And then depending on what's on there, I will tell you how it works. And then I'll ask. Okay. All right. So let's do this. We got our wheel spinning here. Oh, looks like would you rather... Would you rather? So the question I have for you is, would you rather be able to go back in time or forward in time? I can't believe you asked me that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I would rather go back in time. Okay. When I was a kid and I was dancing, I was not into sci-fi. I, you know, I watched Star Wars, of course, when I was younger, but it that wasn't my kind of movie. I was into the musicals. I was into the Gene Kelly and the Ann Miller and the Don, uh, Donald O'Connor and Van Johnson and all of the, and Jimmy Stewart, all of the, the old musicals and then the old, old time movies. Oh. I was not the only thing I think I liked was H.G. Wells' Time Machine. That's the only, um, <laughs> but I like time travel. So they went back in time and then they went future. But I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. There are two kinds of people. One that wants to go forward and look at the future and see the computers and see the aliens and see whatever, the space and all that stuff, or go back in time where things were simpler and um, there weren't computers and there weren't phones and people were different and with each other. And I mean, it's just, and there weren't as many people. <laughs> I would much rather go back in time to where I can learn about history for one thing, um, because going to like Boston or something, which feels like you're going back in time. There's a lot of history on the East coast. You learn yeah. a lot when you go to the East Coast and you feel like you're shot back in time. Same when you go to Europe. Oh my gosh, you feel like you're shot back in time. And I love that. So definitely back to the back to the future. I would rather go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And there you have it. <laughs> Julie, thank you so very much for coming on the show today. I had such a good time talking to you. You're you're <laughs> an amazing actress. And thank you. Aww. Now everybody knows a little bit more about you. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was a blast. <laughs> All right. Well, Thank you to both Julie and to all of the viewers and listeners who came to check this out. We love you all very much. We appreciate everything. And I hope you all stick around to check out the next interview. But we'll see you all next time. Bye.